Porosha, the rustic. So what is corrosion? Corrosion that you have seen right from your childhood. Huh? When the any solid substances, the thickness of a solid substances decreases due to friction or any other chemical reason. That is, we call it corrosion. It may be a metal or it may be the sole of your shoe. Huh? Is it not? Even you will find, suppose you are fry, frying pan or the uh, utensils that you are using constantly and you are cleaning it, and they will come, you will find there is a hole. So this is called corrosion. Okay. So what will write down here corrosion? The corrosion is a process of deterioration. of a metal as a result of the Around. Okay. In case of iron, corrosion is called. Rust. Now, what is huh? chemically rust is there? Hydrated form of oxygen. What is the formula? Fe2O3 F2. Rusting of iron is generally caused by moisture. Uh, 
carbon dioxide and oxygen present in air. You observe that only when. Iron is in contact with moisture. Iron does not. Last in dry yeah, or in this last time you remember only where humidity is more, rusting will be very fast, but the humidity is less, the rusting will be slow. Done, sir. Please remember, this is the definition of corrosion. This is the definition of rusting. And this is the observation that iron does not rust in dry air. If the humidity, when it comes to moist air, only iron rust. These words I have taken from my note. I think this is the simplest possible way to define. Okay, now factors which controls corrosion. Or effect. So it is not only iron, it is any metal. First is the reactivity of metal. 
Now, what is the meaning of reactivity of metals? Now, it depends upon it depends upon the activity series or redox potential. Metals which are having redox potential lower than that of hydrogen, that is, they have a strong tendency to lose electron. They undergo faster process because they react faster with the air and water. Okay. So more reactive metals means what? We lower. Standard reduction potentials. React faster we that water. And surrounding gases. And and undergo faster. Corrosion. Even copper also undergoes corrosion. But mind it, silver and gold, they do not undergo corrosion. Why? Copper, copper, you expose it to air. After a few days, you will find it is forming a green layer is there. It is copper has reacted with the oxygen of the air forming copper oxide. Then copper oxide reacts with the carbon dioxide to give up the copper carbonate. Then this powder will fall down from the copper. Thickness of the copper will decrease. After a few days, you will find there is a hole in the Copper vessel, forget about other metals, because we know copper is having positive standard reduction potential. Others are negative, they will react very fast. But silver and gold, huh, they are not. Why? The standard reduction potential of silver is plus 0 0.80, whereas copper is 0 0.34. Gold is much higher. Huh? Due to that, you find. Silver and gold is being used as a coin and also for making ornament because the process of corrosion is very slow and they hardly react to the air and the moisture. Remember, two. Presence of Presence of impurity. Presence of impurities, I will not explain anything now when I'll go to rust in general. Right? Presence of impurities expedite the process of corrosion. Presence of impurities expedite the Process of corrosion by setting up small Galvanic. Yes. Let's explain. Three. Presence of 
reactive gases. Reactive gases such as carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, etc. Present in air. Form. Produce. Acids. In presence of moisture, these acids act as an electrolyte. And accelerate the process of dust. Hmm. Let me fill in. Is it already there in the copy also I've written? Hmm. Okay. When I'll explain the uh, process of rusting, then you'll understand this word. This black black mark does not go very difficult. I don't know what. If I rub it with water, then I will not be able to write. Let me try. Huh?
that don't go. You only do water roads. Yes. If I use soap, then only. And if I use soap, then you will. If I write, then the writing will be blurred. Yes. All right, then four. Presence of electrolyte in water. See, if the water, as I told you that, uh, this gases dissolve in water and form electrolytes. See, if you are, if the iron is dipped in distilled water, it will not rust. If you dip it in our normal water, it will rust. But if you dip it in salt water, it will rust faster because salt is a electrolyte. So because of that, you'll find that if you use an iron boat and you know ship is made of iron, so the ship rusted, rust faster than that of boat. Why? Because seawater is saline. Hmm. This question come. Presence of electrolyte in Water increases the process of rate of Okay. For example, ship ships rust faster than. Why? Because ship is being plied in seawater, which contains more electrolyte, more salt. Okay, but the boat in the river water is not saline, so in that case the electrolyte is less. So hence the process of rusting is less. Okay. Now we'll go for rusting of iron. So that rusting of iron you will see from the my copy or from book. Um, but uh, today I'll explain.
rusting up. All right, just give me some more. I got me go and drink water. First of all, we should know why the rusting I have to study in electrons. This is the first question, man. Because rusting, where the reaction of iron takes place with oxygen in presence of moisture. Then I should have studied in the chapter of iron only. Iron is there in D and F block. Why I have to study rusting in electrons? It is found. The chemical reaction which is involved in rusting is almost like an electrochemical. So, rusting of iron is being now dealt by the electrochemicals. Let's see how does it happen. See, in electrochemical cell, you require two electrodes and you require electrolyte. And also, you require a salt bridge by which the anodes and cathodes are being connected. See, this is a iron object. See, iron objects are not as smooth as wood. Wood, you polish it. Iron, any metal surface is not smooth. Huh? Any metal surface is not smooth. And even if you make it smooth, you'll find very interestingly, a smooth metal surface, huh? rust, very slowly than that of a rough metal surface. See, so this is the iron. And you, you also have seen, if an iron object is being kept inside the room and outside the room, you'll find the rusting occurs faster in outside. Why? Outside when this iron object is there, by evening what will happen? Water vapor will condense on the surface of the so, let me write it here. Yadi, water will just come in. A thin layer of water will be. Now, morning if you touch, you will find, uh, you can literally see water drops are there on the surface of the metal. It may be any metal. Okay. So what is this? This is iron. And what is this? This is water. Now, in this water film, what is there? This atmosphere has carbon dioxide. If you near, if you are nearby an industry, in that case you'll find atmosphere will also contain sulfur dioxide. If you are staying in a busy town with a lot of traffic, where you find evening it is difficult for you to breathe. Why it is so? Because carbon dioxide is increased because of burning of fuel, along with the sulfur dioxide is also there. So. 
this carbon dioxide gets slowly get i'm only giving example carbon dioxide slowly get and mix with the water don't dilute then what is going to happen now we know from henry's law carbon dioxide is soluble in water and what does it form it form carbonic acid carbonic acid is a weak electrolyte even though it undergoes And that is an electron. All right. The normal. Hmm. So you will find. See, these are the places where bands are there. So here accumulation of water will be more. Here accumulation of water will be more. Here will be more. Here will be more. So in this case. These are all the small, small galvanic cell has formed. Okay. Now what you have iron, and this iron, what about the iron that you use? It is not hundred percent iron. It also contains impurities like other metals. All right. They will contain impurities like metals. So these metals, other metals or impurities. now is going to act as a cathode and iron is going to act as an anode so what is going to happen now see here iron is going to lose two electron so what i can write here Look here. In this case, what happens? This hydrogen now will take this electron to become hydrogen. So let me write here two H plus two electron H. Now this hydrogen, because atmosphere contains carbon dioxide, nitrogen, oxygen. now in this case you will find this it will react with the oxygen of the atmosphere to form to o clear <clears throat> all right now this electron this electron how does it reaches hydrogen see here 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 it is entirely a metal body so in this case you do not require any u tube to conduct to complete the circuit all right you don't require this electron travels this electron travels to the by the metal surface and reaches the cathode okay now what are the reaction takes place at cathode cathode now i'll write it in this way fe2 plus is there okay no let me add in now here let me add okay ah uh, i'll do little change what is the change how many hydrogen has there two so i'll multiply it by 
how many electron I require? Four. I shall multiply by. So let me write that. Two F P S. Okay. Then electron electron get cancelled. Okay, then here you have 4H plus. 4H plus from where you got? You got electrolytes, so that we are not supposed to get this. All right, now we'll write here O2. So it will give us the right here D. Okay. It will give us two Fp two plus plus two H two. So this is our overall reaction. Mm -hmm. This is our overall reaction. What does it what does it say? How you find iron is being combined to the ferrocyte. All right. Now see here. What is the formula of the uh, rust? Formula of rust is Fe2O3. Here, ferrous becomes ferric. Now, this ferrous ice is present in the water. In this water. Okay. So I'll write down here. Four Fp two plus it was I should write that plus four H two O plus O two will give you Fp two. Last are always solid. Right. Yes, yes. Plus eight, eight plus. Now, plenty of water is there. So, FeO2S plus XH2O give you Fe2O3. XH2O plus still are solid. And this is the plus. This is the whole chemistry of rust. So, again, I'm telling you. I have written down in your uh, the note that I have given. I have written down stepwise. I am right not writing stepwise here now. See here. What is the first step? First step will find the formation of electrolyte. In this case, what happens? The water which collects on the surface of the iron dissolve carbon dioxide, forming carbonic acid. If in your atmosphere Sulfur dioxide is also there. Then, if I write H2O, SO2, it will give you H2SO3, sulfurous acid. So, sulfurous acid is then also an electrolyte. Carbonic acid is also an electrolyte. So, by formation of this electrolyte, a small galvanic cell is formed. In that galvanic cell, what is the anode? The anode is the, is the iron. And iron contains impurities this impurity this, these are also metals they act as a cathode so in this in this process the galvanic cell is complete now iron loses to electron at anode and the electron travels to the to the places where impurities are present and there this reaction takes place okay here hydrogen ion that is proton is being converted to hydrogen it combines the oxygen of the air 
which is dissolved in, in water, form of water. And by this way, this is the equation for by which you find how the solid iron metal is being converted into ferrous ion. This ferrous ion now remains dissolved in water. This ferrous ion in aqueous medium further get oxidized to Fe2O3 because iron in plus three state has D5 configuration, half filled configuration, and Fe2 plus D6. We always know that half filled and completely filled uh, configurations are more stable. So iron get automatically oxidized to ferrous to ferric, leading to the formation of ferric oxide. This ferric oxide now absorbs water and ultimately form hydrated ferric oxide, that is nothing but the rust. This is the whole sequence of the reaction of rust. Now right now. It doesn't fight any photo time. Dancer. Okay. Now, how to avoid rusting that we have already seen in a childhood? Huh? How do you avoid rusting? In our house, so we have different articles made of um, iron. Huh? You have in your house, you have uh, grill. You may have iron gate. Some of you, like me, you may keep store water also in iron. Uh, drum. So how do you stop rusting? Simple thing is that you can avoid rusting only if you put a barrier between iron and the moist air. If you put a barrier between iron and moist air, then iron will not come in contact with the electrolyte. It will not come, come in contact with the, with the oxygen of the air. So there is no question of any rusting. So how to prevent rusting? How to prevent rusting? There are Barrier. One is called barrier protection. So, what are the barrier you can use? One by painting. When you paint the iron article, in that case, what will happen? Iron will be will not be exposed to the iron will not be directly exposed to the atmosphere. So in that case, there's no question of any electrochemical reaction. 
All right. So that you can do. But for a machinery part, you cannot paint it. Outside the machine, you can paint. Inside one, so you cannot paint. So what you can do? In a sewing machine, you can use well, or you can use grease. You know, both well and grease, they do not mix with water. Huh? Then that will be fine. That is not going to come in contact. See, you might have seen there are some people who go for long distance swimming. If you swim for one kilometer, two kilometer, nothing. But if you swim for continuously for a long time, then what will happen? Your body will swell. So you'll fall sick. So in this type of cases, the swimmer coat the whole body, entire body, with thick Vaseline. So that water does not directly come in contact with their skin. So you can do this one. Third method is called electroplating. <laughs> electroplating. Electroplating can be done with more reactive metals like nickel, chromium, and all these cases. That is, in that case, they will try to corrode, but they will protect the iron. So electro, that is, you have seen. This uh, nickel plated substances there, chrome plating substances there. Take the example of your bike. You'll find your <coughs> bike, the body will be painted, but the handle and all the uh, all these are not being painted. They are being electroplated with nickel or chromium. So that you can do by electroplating. And four, we use some anti-rust chemicals. Suppose you have made a statue of iron, all right? And if you paint it, then the beauty of the statue gone. So what do you do? We use some anti-rust uh, colorless uh, chemicals, which does not allow the oxygen to come in contact or it, it stops the with the iron from losing electron. If the iron does not lose electron, if the iron does not get oxidized, in that case, it will never form oxide of iron. In that case, you find it can be protected. So there are some chemicals I knew which are, hmm? okay. Some chemicals are used. Some. Coating with some anti rust chemical uh, like bisphenol. So, this is called barrier protection. Now, second. This is called sacrificial protection. Sacrificial protection. See, now you have grown up. Suppose you are going with your uh, youngest brother or sister or with your nephew and niece. If anything happens, you first try to face by yourself so that the younger one should be sick. Similarly, here also the iron objects are being coated with some metals. These metals have lower reduction potential than iron. So in that case, this metal get themselves oxidized before iron get oxidized. So these are called sacrificial protection. One of the very common thing, we call it galvanization. What is galvanization? Hmm? <clears throat> The process of deposition or coating 
of a thing there of zinc on iron surface is called Jelenite. Write down, then I explain. Done, sir. Done, sir. Finished. Yes, sir. Now, how does zinc protect iron? See here. Zinc standard Reduction potential E zero Zn two plus Zn is minus seven point eight volt. E zero Fe two plus Fe is minus zero point four six volt. Now, which is going to act as an anode? This will be accessible. Zinc will lose electron, iron will not. In that case, there is no question of iron forming iron oxide. So, yes. Zinc has lower standard. Reduction potential then iron zinc will get oxidized instead of iron. Hence, rusting of iron will not
So this is not four six. This is four two. Okay. Finish. Done, sir. Try to again. I am trying to understand. See here, this is going to act as an anode. This is cathode. Zinc will become Zn2 plus. Iron will never become Fe2 plus. So if it Fe2 plus is not formed, I have shown you the equation. Huh? That Fe2 plus is not formed. There is no question of formation of ferric oxide. Now, in our mixture of the houses in Shillong, we have till now in Shillong. Uh, the RCC buildings are less, but we have conventional building. If you go to the villages, even in North East, other places also, you find conventional buildings are there. And what, how do you cover our roof? What do you use? In our house, what do you use for, for roofing? What do you use? Tin. Okay. Now see, very interesting. We call it tin. We know tin is a metal. So we, here we have made a mistake. Long time back, iron objects were, these iron plates were being covered with tin. Okay, so this is the iron. Okay, this, is this one, just covered with tin. And this is made of iron. But it is found after one or two shower, this iron started rusting, which does not generally happen with our houses. It lasts for a long time. Suppose uh, many, many years have gone by and because of weather and all the zinc is getting oxidized, then you find then it started rusting, then you pay. Otherwise not. In new condition, you do not. But in case of tin, it did not happen. You know what mistake they have done? Because EGO SN2 plus SN is minus 0 0.14 volt. So you, from little portion, the tin has fallen. Tin has fallen. And what will happen? Which is going to act as a anode? Which will act as a you know, iron. Then the rust will start. So that is the mistake. Initial people have done it. They have realized immediately. They have realized, and they have started coating with zinc. But still, we say tin. These days, these roofs are not called tin. Dia, we call it. CGI shape, we do not call it tin. You go to hardware store and you tell, I want to buy CGI sheet. Now, what is CGI? See, this wavy structure is called corrugated. G stands for galvanized. I stands for iron. So now you will never say tin because you are a chemistry student. You will say it is CGI sheet, corrugated galvanized iron sheet. But if it is not corrugated, if it is not wavy, it's a plain sheet, then we call it GI sheet, galvanized iron sheet. When you go for buying of water pipes, these are iron pipes, yeah, but they are being galvanized. So these water pipes are called GI pipe, galvanized iron pipe. Question may come. If a small portion of the zinc from the CGI sheet has fallen, what will happen? You will say nothing is going to happen. Suppose this portion of zinc has fallen. It is coated with zinc coated with zinc, and from here, zinc has fallen. Will it rust? No, will not, will not rust. Why? Because still here, and plenty of the zinc is there. So 
because the anode is going to form from this side and cathode will be here. So in that case, no chance of iron getting rusted. But if it is a sheet coated with tin, it will immediately rust because the moment it is being exposed, then immediately you find this iron is going to act as an anode and this is going to act as a cathode and the rusting will take place. So this is called sacrificial production. Okay, now, <clears throat> one more process is there, which one you call it anodic protection. Ah. Anodic. If this protection is generally done when you lay the pipes below the ground or when we lay the pipes above seabed. Suppose, you know, in, in Bombay High, we have got a huge stock of petrol. All the crudes are being brought from there. So you cannot bring it by the ship because it will be very costly. So these crudes are passed to the shore. We go from offshore to the shore through big, big iron pipes. And these iron pipes are laid on seabed. You cannot keep it hanging, it will fall down. But sea contains huge amount of electrolyte. So the pipe will disappear after a few months by rusting. So how to do it? And even if you paint it also, even by painting also, what will happen? The paint will, after some time, because of sea water, it will, it will be removed. Even if you galvanize also, then what will happen? Uh, zinc will, will continuously act as an anode and zinc will get oxidized. And after some time, zinc also will vanish again. The iron pipe will be exposed. So what to do? In that case, we go for anodic protection. Now I'll tell you what an anodic protection is. Say it is the seabed. And here you have the pipe. Okay? This is the pipe. Yeah. What you do, you know, we, along with that, we put magnesium slabs. We tie it. Okay? We, we can tie it with metal. See here, iron E0 Fp2 plus Fp is minus 0 0.76 volt. And E0 mg2 plus mg, look here, is minus 2.36. That I made a mistake for 37. One of the latest packet I remember, minus 2.36 volt. Magnesium is extremely reactive. What will happen? Corrosion will occur to magnesium. Your C works, huh? Will iron pipe will be intact. So gradually what will happen? The magnesium will disappear. Hmm? So we will try to locate. Where did you put this magnesium bar? Where did you put? Okay, with the help of, uh, we because in our, this, this so every, every location, whether it is on the surface of the earth or in the, on the uh, uh, sky or even in the ground, also you can locate, hmm? okay? So in your, in your places, you know, what are the places you have put that magnesium slab? So time to time, you'll send the divers and divers will go and replace with a new magnesium slab. In that case, your iron pipe will be never be, hmm? never be rusted. Why do you call it anodic protection? Because you forcefully converted Iron from anode to cathode. This is supposed to be when you rust, it is anode. But what did you do? You forcefully converted this one into cathode by putting more reactive magnesium as anode. So it is called anodic. This one you can do it in your home also. I don't know whether you will get magnesium or not. Suppose you have a grill, you don't want to paint it. 
beautiful grill you have made or you don't want to uh, paint it every year so in that grill just in a place where nobody can have a look what you do by the side of this is a grill okay this is a grill you have made by the side of it you put get a zinc slab zinc is a, even you got a bada baja also it is available and you fix it don't fix it with gum because it will be insulated in that case you and you tie it with the help of copper wire or any other wire see here zinc is this iron is 0.44 in that case you find the rusting process in your in your uh, grill will be greatly reduced you can do same thing with your the water pipes that you have in your house maybe at a distance of say uh, 10 feet 10 feet you tie this because you have put it under the ground na pipe so tie it and you try to remember where did you put it because your pipe may not be long you will find your gi pipe will not rust rust but in shillong you find rusting takes place then you call the plumber you will take a huge amount of money and he'll put a big wire inside it and go on twisting it to remove the rust in that case you will be safe for from rusting by how by anodic protection so you can use zinc you can use aluminum you can use magnesium but for domestic purposes magnesium may not be possible to get but aluminum you will get in the market you go to oh, any any utensil shop you will find to tell me that i want some aluminum ingots they will give a long long rod like this okay because all the uh, old aluminum containers that you exchange it they melt it and make into ingots and then they send it send it to the manufacturer again they make utensils for them okay all right now protection by anti rust see we have found remember the final equation that i have written fe2 plus 4 h2o then o2 has given us fe2 o3 8 h plus see here what does it mean the rusting process is rusting occurs or it hastens in acidic medium so there are some chemical compound which if you dissolve it in water it makes the solution alkaline so this solution if you paint it then they convert the ph uh, on the body of the iron object alkaline and this way the rusting process can be stopped okay so there are some some alkaline phosphates are there alkaline phosphates and chromates these solutions are being used time to time ha huh? you just spray it on on it or paint it now uh, with the brush you will find your substance mm, iron objects will not rust so there are four methods one is called barrier protection which is very very common then we go for galvanization that is called sacrificial protection then you can go for anodic protection and finally you can go for protection by anti rust solution these are generally done for statues only otherwise any or statues or any beautiful objects that you have it in your house otherwise not so this is the whole story of rusting and with this i complete electrochemistry chapter after that i'll go for chemical kinetics thank you baja thank you sir welcome thank you